Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Max. And this is Movies Actually, where we give you an honest review of the movies we've meddled with so mischievously over at Maybe Movies. And on this episode, we are talking about Christmas. And the, the only Christmas movie you really need to see, It's a Wonderful Life. The absolute classic. Yes, so this is the 1946 Frank Capra-directed uh, motion picture mm. starring James Stewart, Donna Reed, Lionel Barrymore, and also featuring uh, Oscar, Oscar winner Thomas Marshall as uh, Uncle Billy. Oh, there you go. Which uh, I did discover he won Best Supporting Actor for Stagecoach in 1939. Oh, right, okay. Uh, well, where, 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 where shall we begin? I mean, I suppose, uh, first off, um, season's greetings to you all. Indeed. Merry season seasonmas. Merry seasonmas. That, yeah, that'll work. <coughs> so, before we get into the plot itself, um, this is a nice and e- easy one. I know exactly where I was when I watched this, for the first time, if you can believe this, because I was around yours. Oh, right, okay. First timer. Yes, yeah. Okay. So, um, as you obviously, as you know, because you were there, uh, obviously when you used to do your open house on a, on a, on a Christmas Eve, mm-hmm. and one of the Christmas Eves when I was around there, and you were looking at what to put on next, and you said, oh, well, what about uh, It's a Wonderful Life? And I was like, yeah, why not? I, I, I've never seen it. And your jaw hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. It's such a perennial classic. I couldn't believe that you'd gotten entirely through your life without seeing it at least once. No, well, I think it was... I can't tell you for any reason why I never saw it as a kid, but I think by the time I might have been sort of old enough to, to actually go and seek it out, that was my kind of bar humbug Christmas of shit, period. Uh, I see. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, and so it was, it was, and that kind of went on for for a lot longer than it should have done. So it's only been in the last few years that I kind of, sort of rediscovered Christmas, as it were. So yeah, so that was it was the perfect time. And Jesus, I, I, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It hits you in the fields, doesn't it? It yes. truly hits you in the fields. Um, for me, it was one of those... I have a number of semi-mythical films from my childhood <clears throat> where I remember the film, I remember scenes from it, but I can't remember where I saw it or what I was doing, or anything like that. I just know I've seen that film. Mm. Ironically enough, for a number of years, The Blues Brothers was one of those mythical films. Oh, okay. I, I saw it when I was in America, and then for years and years, I was like, did I dream that? Did I dream that strange movie? Mm. And then it finally, there was a showing in the UK, and I was like, no, it's not my imagination, <laughs> it's a real movie. And this is one of those films. Although, at least this one I knew wasn't mythical, because at least from 1984, thanks to Gremlins, I knew it was a real film. I was like, oh, right, okay, I know that, I know that. I can't remember where I saw that, but I know that. And then finally in, it was probably like 89 or 1990, Mm -hmm. it got screened in the UK, and I watched all the way through for the first time since I was a child. And I was like, oh! This is it. This is the film I remember. It'd be a surprise if you haven't heard of It's a Wonderful Life. It, as you said, it is a perennial classic. Based off of a short story? Yes. Uh, somebody who knew the... Uh, I don't know if it was Frank Capra's, one of Frank Capra's friends or something, but instead of giving out gifts that year, they wrote a short story and made it a part of a Christmas card. Mm-hmm. That they gave out to, I, I think there were like twenty five copies in uh, the did, or, original version. Um, so the original, well, when I looked it up, it was two hundred. Two hundred, because uh, you couldn't afford to get the story into print, so he put them out as as Christmas cards. As Christmas say. cards, yeah. And it was an RKO uh, executive who found it. It was ah right, yes. And they toyed it around with it for a while, but couldn't. There was like three different versions of the script, but they couldn't get anyone to pick it up. And then Frank Capra apparently found it in about forty five. Mm. Somebody said, have you read this? The original story is called The Greatest Gift. That's right, yes. So he heard about it in 1945, fell in love with it, bought the rights back from RKO Mm. for the same price that they bought it from originally from the author, which is about $10,000. That explains, even though it's an RKO film, that's why it's got the Liberty Bell 
Yes, because that was their first production. That, uh, was, that, was, that was apparently was Frank Because, of course, normally RKO get the old radio tower at yes. the very beginning, and you didn't get that, no. even though it was an RKO production. Yeah. I presume that means RKO was the distributor? Must have been, yes. Yeah. Because, yeah. um, again, we're looking at a very different time in in Hollywood where directors, actors would be tied mostly to one studio. Frank Capra and I think I had Billy Wilder as well as one of them. There's about four guys, basically, who went off and made their own company, Liberty Films. And this was the first film they made. Ah, right. I, I, it's one of those ones, every time I put on the movie, I notice that opening because I don't remember seeing it very much as a mm. child. Exactly, yeah. You know, and I used to watch a lot of black and white movies when I was a kid. So, um, but yeah, so this is the story of George Bailey mm. and every man who is the man you can depend on, regardless of what you need, regardless but, of what he needs. Regardless of what he needs. But he's also a man with dreams. Yes. Big, big dreams. And uh, one by one, he sacrifices them. In the best interest of uh, his father's business, the betterment of his town, mm-hmm. and various other uh, altruistic activities. And then one snowy Christmas Eve finds himself in a dark, dark place and thinks about things he shouldn't. Mm-hmm. But somewhere out there... Someone is tending the light. Someone is tending the light. And it's all about how he learns to understand the wonderful place he has in the universe. Without giving away any spoilers, no, I think. No, I think that, that so it's a hard much, one. If you yes. haven't seen it, if you haven't... Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's everything... I mean, Capra said that this, was, uh, that, that this was the movie he'd been waiting his whole life to make. Mm. And it's luckily he was, you know, because obviously he didn't die till 1991. He was, you know, he was still alive to to, to see it get the recognition it deserves because it didn't do too well when it came out. No, it didn't. It was, um, it was like one pretty much a flop. It just, it just made its money back. I think it was, mm. it was like it was made for by 3.18 million and it only took 3.3. At the box office. A big reason of why this is the movie that it is today is because there was a clerical error on the license for the film. So it wasn't extended for, so that after the first after it's twenty five years after it was released, it went into the public domain and they never re they, and they never mm-hmm. re optioned it. Re optioned it. Then then they never renewed the license. So as soon as it went to the public domain, everywhere can play it. And during the seventies and early eighties it got a lot of plays, probably mostly in the States. Every network picked uh, yeah, it up. Yeah, originally it was a thing in the States. And even then, at the beginning, it wasn't a big thing. It was only after a decade or 15 years of them repeated viewings that people started to recognise it for the perennial classic that it is now. Exactly, exactly. And it is it is wonderful. It is... It is, it is oh, what was it? Because I, I watched the, the, the documentary on, on, on my copy. Mm. Um, and it was saying that Capra was known for making these very um, positive... Um, homely, uh, sentimental movies. Oh, right. Okay, I suppose I can see that. See, the thing is, is I've seen a couple of his other movies, and, like, you know there's, like, a subtle subtext of political commentary Mm -hmm. on this story. In his other films that I've seen, he was man with a hammer, just bashing. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was really quite political in some of his other stuff. I think the only other one of his that I have seen is I Snook an Old Lace. Uh, because I was in, you know, I always stage. forget that's a Frank Capra movie. Mm-hmm. See, that's an exception. That is an exception. It's it's mostly not about those sorts of things. No. But you can't take it with you, for example, is <laughs> uh, really quite hammer you over the head. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. But again, you know, it's, it's as I said, it's, it's a movie you should go back to and you should really watch every Christmas if you can. Especially in the kind of cynical age we live in today. I try to. Yeah, it, it it does. Even if just for that two hours and ten minutes, it just helps you feel that everything's right with the world. Yep. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. It's so well crafted. There's so much subtext and layering in this film and really well composed sequences that show, don't tell, mm-hmm. and all of those amazing things that good cinematography does, this film does, in spades, in a lot of places. Apparently, again, from when I was looking at it, a bit like, and again, it, always, it actually makes me think of David Lynch. He's, um, Capra was, lots of the people who worked with him, he was very much an opportunist as well. Mm. And things that just happened, he would just keep them in there. You've seen Wild at Heart? Yes, but only once in a long time ago. There's a guy in Wild at Heart who's, for no reason, they never allude to it, 
but he's just got his arm in a cast. Mm. And it's because the actor broke his arm about three days before the shoot, phoned up to say, I'm sorry, I can't shoot because I've broken my arm. And Lynch went, nah, come on. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> You'll add uh, flavor. Right, okay, so adapting to the situation. Exactly. Because, yeah, um, yeah there's, a, there's a number of bits in this that are, are like that. Um, there are a couple of sequences I was like, was that improvised? Well, the bit where Uncle Billy wanders off drunk mm-hmm. and walks into the bins. Mm-hmm. He didn't. That wasn't in the script. Okay. Right. One of the props, dro- one of the grips dropped a load of props while they were filming. And it just caught, caught on the audio. Yeah. And he was like, oh God, I'm going to lose my job. And Capra gave him an extra $10 for <laughs> adding to the uh, for, for adding to the scene. To the atmosphere. Yeah. Right, yeah, of course. I can't remember the lady's name. The lady who asks for not a lot of money during that scene in the bank. In, in, in the yeah, I have no of, idea what her name was. Yes. Yeah, again, that that apparently is, is, he said to her before they started shooting, just surprised you. Yeah, okay, yeah. So his reaction is genuine, because he oh, no brilliant. What he was what she was going to say. I had a feeling there was a fair amount of improvisation yeah. in that film. Yeah, which just, again, I mean, obviously, once you've, if you've seen it, you'll know what I mean. If you haven't seen it, it'll make sense when you do. But it's just wonderful little things like that. It, it seems like, I mean, even though a lot of people were... A bit deprecating about working with Capra. They thought he, they, a lot of people didn't get on with him, but you know, he, he obviously had. No, I get the impression he may have been a fairly demanding, demanding director, especially mm. at the time. Yes, yeah. Uh, this was also obviously Jimmy Stewart's first film after the war. Hmm. Right. Okay. You could probably make a film of that. You should check that out because his... oh, the dude was a champion. Mm. And when he finally did manage to get his get his CO to post him overseas, uh, the first place he was posted to was RAF Tippenham, which is like a stone's throw from here, really. Tippenham or Tippenham? Tippenham. 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 Yeah. Ah, right. I don't know Tippenham. I know Tippenham. Uh, well, it's just Tippenham Airfield now. But yeah, it's like North Suffolk. It's not too far from here. Oh, right. My okay. friend Chris Neal, who flies, he flies ah, a lot from So Tippenham. a local boy to us as well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, so this might be a bit of a tangent, but I don't know if you knew, but there's actually a, a small connection to the British sci-fi sitcom Red Dwarf from this movie. From uh, this? From this, yeah, yeah. I, it's not in the show, but in the novelizations that Grant and Naylor wrote, they did their version of the Better Than Life story, and Lister's Better Than Life was Bedford Falls. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was George Bailey. Oh, wow. That was Lister's perfect life. Fantastic. <laughs> Just, oh, well yeah. done. Well done, Grant Naylor. Brilliant. What What else can we really, really... It's we a perennial it? classic. It's well-constructed, well-written. It's worth your time. And if you want to get the feels, this is the movie for you. I mean, even just this very day, re-watching the film to prepare for this video, it had me in tears. Once again. And I've seen this movie like 30 times. Not a dry eye in the house, definitely. Definitely Definitely. not. So it's definitely worth... If you want something to make you feel good... Sorry, just very quickly to add to that. In the last episode where where we mentioned this, and I had to go and get a clip to put in that episode, just that two seconds that I was putting in for, for the video... It was, just, it was there behind my eyes. It's like, God damn it! Yep, get you every time. <laughs> every time. Every time. It's um, it's well worth your time if you want a reason to feel a little, little bit better about the season. Absolutely. So, I mean, we hope that you've had a wonderful Christmas uh, and are looking forward to a, a an equally wonderful New Year in insofar as 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 is able. I think that's. Um, oh wait, sorry. Excuse me. Oh, before oh, I forget. Yes. Yes. All of the thumbs. All of the All thumbs. Of the thumbs. <laughs> Definitely check this one out. Do not miss it. Uh, and just put it off, put it away, forget about it, and then come back to it again about this time next year. But we're going to leave it there, and we'll be back in the new year with more of, more of these, hopefully, when we will be asking the most important question of all. Which is... I'm the bad guy. Take care, and Happy New Year. As always, guys, DTFN.